So I made this video a couple of months ago, the pop effect tutorial video on how to obviously create a pop effect. And I finally had enough time to sit down and uh, bring it to the next level so that we can uh, do all of this work in just one simple hotkey. And I'll teach you how to do that in this video. Stay tuned. Okay, so the first step is actually, if you haven't watched the original video, go back and watch that. It's really important that you understand that before you watch this, otherwise you're gonna have a couple of problems. So your first step obviously is to get your clip. Uh, I've got mine here, rain clouds. This is from my latest video that I'm editing. You'll see that soon. And uh, basically you just have the effect controls here. And this is where the pop happens right there. So uh, what we're wanting to do is ensure that all of these other settings, they're not changed. Uh, op opacity is a different story. You can have whatever opacity you want. But it's really the uh, things under motion, this little thing here, you want to have none others change other than the uh, scale to create the pop effect. Then you want to right click, save preset and name it whatever you want. You know, I name mine pop effect. Uh, from then on, let me just reset my layout. From then on, you can find the preset under here. I've got mine as pop effect and I've got a couple of other ones. So now if I completely go to another side of the timeline and drag in, uh, for example, my dark gray backer, and I want this to pop in, uh, we can drag in the pop effect onto this and it will execute the pop effect. It doesn't really work that well when you've just got a solid gray backer, but if I you know, drag in the Premiere logo and do that, see? Nice clean pop effect. And of course you can edit this, you can you know, have different speeds of pop effects and stuff like that. The next part is gonna be using Auto Hotkey to automate this process so that you don't have to dawdle around and, uh, and instead of having to drag it on, you can execute it using one key press. So the first step is uh, understanding a few key things. Uh, this is the code. It will be in the video description uh, and I'll run through it in blocks. Uh, and it's really important that you listen to what I'm saying here because if you use the wrong uh, functions inside of the script, then the script won't work. Um, so these two lines here, they block the user input. This one sets the key delay to zero so there's no uh, input lag between key presses uh, or mouse clicks. This line stores your uh, current mouse position. And this one's a really finicky one. So I have my monitors set up in a specific way where the middle monitor is elevated just a slight amount uh, when compared to the other ones. This is the line that accounts for that. So normally people would use mouse move. I use DLL call because uh, for whatever reason, mouse move does not work with uh, multi-monitor setups where one monitor is higher than the other, which is really strange. And uh, then I've got these two values. Basically, these are X and Y coordinates. If you didn't do middle school maths, then you wouldn't understand what I mean by that, but most people will, so, you know. Uh, basically, there's this handy program that comes with Auto Hotkey. It's called Windows Spy. You click on it and it loads up. It will constantly stay on top of all of your windows and it tells you where your mouse currently is. Um, relative and client values for these ones here, right here. Um, those are for if you just have, you know, one monitor or generic monitor set up, but I, I have to use absolute because of using DL or call and the multi-monitor setup problem and everything like that. I'll make a video on it in the future. Uh, but basically what all of these do is I've just written down where my mouse needs to go to get to the effects tab, select the effect tab, uh, move my cursor to the effects search bar and input some text. So in this case, we're inputting pop, getting rid of anything, you know, that was already in there. And uh, then we're selecting it, which is here, and we're dragging it onto the clip. Basically, all you want to do is click and select and then hit num3, it'll apply onto the clip and then you are good to go. So I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, then please go ahead and hit that like button. If you want to see more Adobe based content, if you want to see more tutorials like this, and especially if you want to see this video I'm working on right now, go ahead and hit that subscribe button. I hope you're having a great day and I'll see you in the next video.